of this video is going to go down a very deep spider hole. I better put up that warning. Yeah, warning, the warning has been removed. And I'll tell you what, if you suffer any form of arachnophobia or fear of spiders, you're going to struggle with this video. And we've just had the most incredible rain event, and I need this to happen because it might start to explain something that I found in the suburb where I live in Sydney, which is a place called Barara. And it may connect to something that I found at our place oh, earlier in the year, I'll just say like that, months ago. And it's along this track here where I made that stunning discovery. But I'm gonna have to tread very, very carefully at the moment. And I can tell you what, I've got my absolute best boots on. What's directly next to me is a tennis club. There's also a neighboring childcare center. There's also people's homes across the road. And it's in this area here. I would be treading very, very carefully once we take a closer look. I'm just gonna stand still here for a moment, very carefully survey what's going on. If you look carefully in the video I'm taking here, you may start to connect the dots to what I've found. It's semi-interesting, now it's rained a fair bit, it has disguised what's going on here, but I'll put a torch onto a hole there. Yeah, see so who lives down that hole? I can see another hole there, I'll put a torch on it. Okay, yeah, who's down there? Right in the middle of the screen, and I'll put a torch on it to make it obvious. Ah, who lives down that hole? It's a bit sinister as well, because sometimes you move something and you will see a hole. I remember this hole from the other day when I found what I found here. Okay, yeah, who lives down that hole right there? One thing I noticed about this area at the moment versus the rest of the suburb is it's actually fairly dry. This is the top of the ridge. When I discovered this the other day, I was actually looking at a brush turkey nest where a male brush turkey is looking after the eggs. And I walked up this path here and it's when I looked down on the ground, I thought, my goodness me. And I'll throw to some photographs of what I captured just the other day. And I've showed these photographs to a few people I know and there's been a couple of interesting things said. And I'll also show you the video I took of that day as well. I found this funnel web nesting area not far from my place. There's holes everywhere here. I'm just putting out a few of the holes. Frippin' hell, big holes, small holes. Just the more you look here, uh, the more holes I see. Amazing. There's the male bush turkey that I've been watching uh, and he's got a massive mound there. But it was only from looking at him I discovered the other horrors of the suburb. On the argument point, are there just cicada holes, Leo? Well, yes, we're on the cusp of the cicada season. This is, I'll call it, very late spring. If it was cicada holes, I would see the nymph shells on the trees here and I'll just walk around this tree here there's that stick I was playing with earlier I'm not seeing any nymph shells here I mean I'm looking at other trees here I can't see any signs of cicadas uh, the one thing I do notice here is there's a great big stack of I'll just call it broken up branches and stuff that would generate a lot of critters and bugs and whoever's living down the holes would love whatever crawls out of that area there and if it's crawling across this area here, especially at night, I tell you what, I reckon it's an absolute death sentence. Now, to me, what I found here ticks a lot of the boxes to being the Sydney funnel web because it's nice and high and dry, even though the rest of the suburb is saturated. I can see the way the nests are laid out in the ground in their spacing and the number of them also says to me, funnel web spider. I can see there's plenty of food sources in the area. I can also see it's a nice shaded area under trees. When it's sunny here, it's actually really nice. But crikey, I'd hate to be up here at night. And the problem with this area here is it's way, way too close to where I live in the suburb. Maybe you can argue a point that I've found something totally different. I'm saying funnel web, you may say something else, but if I show you a little home over here, I think what's down there will be compelling evidence for my side of the argument. Okay, the hole in the middle of the screen there, I could easily stick my thumb down that hole. There's not a chance I would be. It has got a webbed entrance there. Of course, it's super saturated by all the rain. Okay, so yeah, what do you think of that? I'll tell you what, to me it looks like a complete death trap. 
that's the hole there. I've got the stick near it. They're often very well disguised in camouflage. The spiders are extremely elusive critters. Thank God for that, hey? That is if it is Sydney Funnelweb spiders. I'm saying it is. Maybe you will beg to differ. I'll put my pokey stick back in its pokey spot right there. I did bring with me my ball camera. I've got a camera on this which is about the size of a finger. Well, while I'm using this, I'm not going to use my iPhone. I'm going to completely concentrate on using the bore scope and I will voice over whatever we see. The ball cam does record audio, and maybe I was going to do this without me talking over this, but I want to tell you my experience of putting the ball camera down these holes. Yes, there's a black spider in here. I'll pause the video here, and one thing I'll say is there's other things living in these holes. They look like little mites. They look like little spiders. I'm not exactly sure what's in here. These funnel web holes are very interesting pieces of engineering. I can only get about halfway down. It's about 15 centimeters or six inches, or if you can relate to half a ruler's length down into the ground. And there seems to be a chamber there, but then there's another hole that goes down further into this nest. And at that first chamber, before you can go down further into the nest, it seems a spider can pull over the web there and seal it off. It's almost like it can protect itself from whatever's going on in that upper part of the nest. We haven't got to the part of the video where I start to show you we're dealing with hundreds of spider holes in this area. And the very common thing about all the holes is, is the way they're designed. It's almost like it's the same engineers come along and put all the holes into the ground. The holes have a dog leg kink system in them, so it's hard for me to get my camera past that kink. And it's when I get past that kink, I can see the what I call the first chamber. I haven't been able to get into that second chamber. I'd need a smaller camera to be able to penetrate that lower level. And I think it's that lower level is where the young are brought up. The spiders are reared within the hole. And then at some point they decide to go and make their own hole. And obviously in this part of the suburb where I live, they've been extremely good at it. One consolation, I can see the spiders are more fearful of me than I am of them. Mind you, it should be the other way around because the Sydney funnel worm is a very, very dangerous spider. In fact, it's one of the most dangerous spiders in the world. I think the scariest part going on here is to a lot of people just looking at these holes in the ground, they would just say, oh, there's cicada holes. Nothing more, nothing less. Every hole has a web structure going down to these chambers. They are all identical in a sense, but they present like other holes at the top. And that's what's a little bit sinister here. Some of the holes do present and they look like funnel web holes, some of them just look like a cicada hole. So are you getting a feel for these spider holes? Now in making this video, I put the bore camera down 90 funnel web holes. Of course that generated 90 different little videos of looking down webbed holes. I could have potentially put the camera down another 50 funnel web holes, but I thought to myself, maybe my luck will start to run out if I keep playing with these most deadly spiders. I was also very aware that if I was bitten by one of these spiders, the rubbish income on YouTube these days is never going to cover the cost of riding in an ambulance to hospital. Maybe I will show you a couple of videos here where I never got past that dog leg section of the hole. There's a very fine web at the top. Sometimes that fine web goes out to make a funnel at the top. Maybe that's why they're called funnel webs. But sometimes that was totally absent. But once you got into that hole in the ground, there seemed to be a web lining going on. Once you got to a certain depth, you could start to see that all these holes presented exactly the same. Maybe I can find the piece of video which does seem to show a smaller spider in these holes. Maybe it's a funnel web spiderling, but I did see many times other things crawling in these holes. Whether or not it's associated with the funnel webs, I'll need spider experts to explain that one for me. Many people have asked me over the years, Leo, can you take a look at the Sydney funnel web? And I used to think to myself, well, they're not really in my part of town. Wow, did I get that wrong? There is a nightmare infestation and it's way, way too close to where I live in the suburb. 
Now, what I can't see going on in this area, and I know they eat funnel web spiders, and that is bandicoots. And we've had a stack of bandicoot activity going on at our house for, well, nearly two years now. During those recent rainy years, the bandicoot numbers in our backyard seem to have exploded. Some people say they're very destructive and they wreck gardens and blah, blah, blah. Other people argue, no, no, they're the perfect lawn aerators. But there's one thing I know, and that is if there were bandicoots in the area where all these funnel web holes are, I'm pretty sure they would take out the funnel web spiders here real fast. There'd be dinner, midnight snack, and morning snack here for weeks and weeks and weeks for hungry little bandicoots. It's been strangely nice looking at the ground here. Now it's nice and wet looking for spider holes in the ground. I keep getting this strangest feeling there's something crawling up my legs. I keep checking my legs because I keep getting this strange tingly feeling. I know there's stacks of spider holes on this side. I saw the other day heaps of them on this side. I absolutely know there's stacks on this side as well. But finding what I found here uh, is semi-comforting because it makes sense of what I found back at our place and it was late summer of the year I'm making this video. And I thought to myself, wow, I've never had a funnel web at our place, but now I've found one. So where else are they in the suburb? Well, I believe I've found a place where there's lots. I'm just walking away and back home now and I've got the male brush turkey walking next to me here. I really thought those guys there cleaned up the sort of spider I think is living down the holes or maybe they don't. I like to punish myself, guess where I am? I'm back at the funnel web spider infestation. This is two days after you saw the rainy footage and maybe you're having trouble spotting those spider holes in the ground. Well, I brought something with me that's gonna make them stand out. I'm gonna put flowers on the holes I see along the path here. And I'm only gonna do this side of the path because I don't think I have enough flowers to cover all the holes on the other side of the path. I'll be doing this next to all the holes. I hope I have enough flowers. Well, one problem for me, I've just run out of flowers and I've got a lot more spider holes to cover. This is my reload tree. I've just got to be able to reach a clump of flowers without getting taken out by a bee. I'm hoping that's enough to show you what I want to show you. If it's not, crikeys, we're in trouble. I'm reloaded. I can put more flowers down next to the holes. It is a miracle of nature. The more I look here, the more I see. You know, I'm going to run out of flowers from that second lot of jacaranda flowers I grabbed. Would you believe me that I've actually run out of jacaranda flowers again? I'm going to walk very slowly up the path here. Everywhere you see a purple flower is a funnel web spider hole and I'm not pulling your leg, I'm not playing games here. I completely underestimated how many spider holes are in the ground here. It is quite remarkable. I noticed the larger holes are on the perimeter of this area. Smaller holes are more in the middle. And this is the area where on the wet day and went back on the dry day, you could see the spider holes, but I tell you what, when you see the flowers next to the spider holes, it really highlights what's going on. Tight clusters of holes there, and as I traverse out to the edge, you get the much, much larger funnel web spider holes out on the perimeter over there. But the walking tour hasn't finished. I've got more flowers on the ground to show you. I'll just get past the tree. In fact, there's my stick there from the other day. Do you think it's safe to pick up that stick? Oh. That was quite daring to do. Anyway, we are looking for the purple flowers. I guess to get around the tree, of course, there's the hole next to the path there. Yes, there are holes on the path. And coming up to the other side here, you can see lots more flowers on the ground. Remember, every flower is a funnel web nest. And there was an area here where it was very hard to find something, but then up against the trees here, and I'm gonna go in closer here, you find the monster holes and I'd hate to think who's down there. I've gone in a bit tighter. I've never seen anything like this and this was meant to be the minor preview video. It's actually turned into the major video. And what I've discovered here is it's mind blowing. It's the force of nature. It is impressive in the strangest way. Let me just get past this tree. And I will go in and you're probably saying, oh Leo, come on, you just dropped purple flowers here, there and everywhere. Well, please let me invite you into a, a closer look and. I'll show you next to any flower as a hole. In a shaded area where a tree trunk goes through the land here. Remember, every flower, there's a spider hole next to it. Once you get a feel for what they can do and the way they hide their nest, that all starts to appear. I mean, this is a classic example here. Okay, there's the nest there. 
got stuff woven into the top and if I come over here there's a tree there if I move that tree aside there's the hole right there and of course there's the flower next to it I wish that bit of wind would go away it's starting to shift some of my flowers I'll just come in and I'll take some photographs of all the holes and flowers and the disbelievers will hopefully become believers one thing I notice here is I see a lot of flies attracted to the ground here so there's something going on here be it a nest up in the trees or there's something on the ground here attracting flies I haven't got my head around that and maybe that's another reason why we're seeing such an infestation of spiders in this area I mean this is a chronic infestation this is nothing small I'll just move further in all the little purple flowers are up in that area up there and if I take a look at the ground here and hopefully you get your spider eyes in you'll see the holes there's so many holes here I totally underestimated what was going on here the more I look here the more holes that I see and what's sort of curious is that they're facing this way there's one there there's one there because I'm actually walking uphill here as I keep walking up here there's more holes you're getting your spider eyes in because that's what you need here there's just so many to look at they're much easier when they're facing you okay and there's one here they are absolutely everywhere it's like the the walk of death through here just crawling up through here oh my god if i just go up here and your eyes will get tuned into what's going on here down there oh i can't believe it it's just amazing and i do it's just trying to get my head around why there's so many funnel web holes in this area your eyes are keyed into all this now look at them there okay nice monster one there and there's a nice grouping over here i mean look at that there my god i'd hate to be laying down here at night and another very important thing here is the leaf litter has been moved away if i remember i'll explain that completely uh, near the end of the video just in the lay of the land here of course the flowers on this side the spiders are all through here they are also all through the other side and I spoke about the childcare centre being the neighbour. Well, I'll point out where the childcare centre is. It's that building there. That's the childcare centre up there. I'm going to use Google Maps to show you how concentrated an area the funnel web spider infestation is. I can track out the area. It's like the shape of a kite. And I do have a theory about this area that you'll hear later in the video. In metric measurements, it's a 50 metre perimeter with an area of 145 metres square. If you understand Imperial, the perimeter is 164 feet and the area is 1,565 feet square. This is not a very big area at all, but it's an absolute honeypot of deadly funnel web spiders. And the time when I made this discovery is the time of year when the Australian Reptile Park puts these reeds in the media. Let me read for you. As peak funnel web spider season approaches, the Australian Reptile Park is calling on Central Coast residents to collect any funnel webs and their egg sacs that they might find in their gardens or nearby bushland. And by reading that, I've just turned the rest of the world off from wanting to live in Australia. I've always said Australia's not for everyone. Anyway, reading on. The park is asking for responsible adults, well that counts me out boys and girls, to retrieve egg sacs safely and take them directly to the Summersby facility. Once hatched, the spiderlings will be raised at the park until they are mature and are able to join the life-saving venom milking program. Personally, I wouldn't classify milking funnel web spiders as a fun job. Anyway, reading on. Park director Liz Gabriel said each year more male funnel web spiders were needed for the program. So that says to me only the males get milked. And reading on it says because male funnel webs only live for about a year once they reach maturity. We only have a very short period in which we can extract their venom. We rely on funnel web spider donations from members of the public. Well, I can tell the Australian Reptile Park exactly where there's hundreds of funnel web spiders, but I don't think I can go in there and dig them up for them because that is council land. I'm pretty sure the local council will have my guts for garters if I start to dig up their precious land. And maybe I should read this, it's very important to say. The park is the sole supplier of funnel web spider venom to make into the life-saving anti-venom. There's something that I've noticed amongst the funnel web holes here, and it's this style of tree here. I'm calling it a paper bark. It's got bark like that. You pull it back and spiders and stuff appear. And if I look around here, that's what's unusual about this spot. There's like a clump of these styles of trees, and 
all around these trees are the funnel web holes. So maybe it's connected, maybe it's not. I'm really not an expert on the connection between trees and the funnel webs. It's a beautiful sunny day today and I told you it was nice under the trees here. Well, it's nice if you ignore the spiders that are going on in the ground. The other peculiar part about the lay of the land here, and it relates back to that brush turkey, is the leaf litter on the ground here has basically been all cleaned up. This is like naked ground. And if I finish the video by walking towards the brush turkey nest, I ran out of flowers. I could have put more flowers into this area here, but you'll notice the ground cover here uh, would normally be crunching under my feet. It'd be basically leaves everywhere and thick leaves everywhere. Uh, it's all been scraped up by the turkey and the brush turkey makes these amazing mounds. And here's one of the mounds here. It's like an incubation mound for the eggs that the female turkeys lay. And I can't go onto the nest. I can probably only go about this close. Let you get a bit of a feel for what's going on here. I can't see the turkey at the moment, but I have taken a fair bit of video here of the turkey doing what turkeys do that is the male turkeys and they're regulating the temperature of the nest and it's actually quite a wondrous thing to watch it's actually quite relaxing to watch what's going on here and that's what was drawing me to this area uh, initially to look at the brush turkeys doing its thing I, I was trying to find a female here but uh and also the chicks when they hatch which is very soon uh haven't been that lucky yet all i've been able to find is hundreds and hundreds of funnel web spider holes. Well, I suppose you get lucky in the strangest way, don't you? I need to put this up at the end of the video. It's very important for me to say, this is the reserve where I made the video. You can see the more whitish trees in there, which are those paper barks, whatever. And all the funnel web nests are underneath there. You go walk through there to the tennis center. The brush turkey nest is down there. And as I pointed out in the video, the childcare center is directly next door. I spoke to a lovely old lady in a house which is directly opposite where I found the funnel web spider infestation in the reserve there. I showed her some photographs of the holes on my phone and straight away the reply was, oh, don't worry, they're just cicada holes. I said to her, look, there's no nymphs on the trees. Yes, we're on the cusp of the cicada season. We've already spoken about that in this video. And she was sort of still in denial that they were funnel web holes. Then I showed her the video that I had on my ball camera and she looked at this and I think maybe then she started to connect the dots and then that's no pun there of what's going on in the reserve. I've spoken to the tennis center, I have spoken to the childcare center and I've spoken to local residents in the area that I've bumped into. Maybe that one little old lady across the road was in denial until she saw the ball cam video. One gentleman down the road reported he dug up a funnel web spider in his front yard. I'm not at all surprised. And what was really nice was a gentleman from the tennis center and a lady who was the director of the childcare center came to this spot here that I made the video and they had a look at the spider infestation that I found. Luckily, they were as concerned as I was and they pointed out to me, like I pointed out to you in the video, look at the rubbish in this reserve. A lot of stuff just laying on the ground and it's only gonna make this area more complicated and easier for spiders to reside. Now there's one thing to point out a problem and it's Hornsby Council who need to come and clean this area up, but it's another thing to provide a solution and I've actually touched upon that in this video. Very simple solution here. Introduce the bandicoots and I'm absolutely certain that this problem would be eradicated. And what's nice about a bandicoot solution is it's a nice natural way to take out those funnel webs.